Hello, my name is Thomas Werner, and I'm making this video in order to help you transition into your new fourth year project related to the solar concentrator rig. In this video, I'll be talking to you about the design of concentrated photovoltaic and thermal receivers. Hopefully this will give you a good general understanding of how the receivers work, as well as give you some useful information to get you started on your new receiver design. So firstly, let's talk a little bit about what is a solar concentrator and how it works. The solar concentrator at Harawa University is essentially a large dish which concentrates sunlight into a very small area at the front. Um, for more details on how these concentrators work and the design of it, uh, see Gordon's video uh, entitled Solar Concentrator Design. The main function of the receiver is to extract the energy being concentrated by the sun. This can be done through photovoltaics which converts the sunlight into electricity or you can extract the heat being generated in order to boil water, for example. In this case, we'll be looking at both these functions in what is called a concentrated photovoltaic and thermal receiver. This takes into account the utilization of both the electrical and the thermal outputs. So what this project in particular looks at is the receiver functionality and what designing receiver entails in particular. I'll be looking at also numer how to numerically model these systems. This diagram shows the main transfer mechanisms for a general receiver. Here you can see the concentrated sunlight measured through a radiance reaching the surface of the receiver. The radiance is then partially converted into electricity through the PV cells and partially converted to heat. The heat is then conducted through the receiver and extracted through convection at the other end. So here is my receiver design. I'm just going to go through really quickly all the different components of it. First of all, you can see here, here's the attachment. This is used to attach the receiver to the rig using these slots, as you can see here. The next part is the solar cells themselves with the glass. The glass which is used was a low iron glass, uh, which has uh, better transmittance than normal glass. And the solar cells are encapsulated in a material called seal guard. Full details on the encapsulation process can be found uh, in one of the links and in my dissertation paper. Um, now you can see the, the actual area which the PV cells are mounted on with a little slit here uh, for the thermocouple to be embedded into. Um, moving on to the back side, here we have the inlet and outlet for the water supply. Uh, and inside you can see a serpentine configuration used uh, for the heat exchanging surface, uh, which tries to maximize surface area for better heat exchange. Okay, so here's a quick demonstration on how the receiver actually fits onto the rig. As you can see, there's three slots here, which just slot into the into there, as so. And that's about it. And now you can see the inlets and outlets for the water. And the concentrator will be here, directing the sunlight into the front of this area. think about when designing your receiver is the testing. In order to test your receiver, you'll need equipment such as thermocouples. These are to be embedded into your design in designated locations, wherever you want to measure the temperature. And also you'll be wanting to measure the power output of your PV cells. In order to conduct these tests and assess the performance of the receiver, the following equipment was used. A national instrument, 9211, in order to measure the temperatures, and the USB 6008, also a national instrument, to measure the voltages. These are used in conjunction with the LabVIEW software, all programming of which can be found in the Dropbox shared folder. For more details on the complete test rig setup and how to achieve the IV curves using manual techniques, 
consult my dissertation paper and my files in the shared Dropbox folder. The numerical model was created by using an Excel spreadsheet which combines all of the numerical analysis for the radiation input, PV cell performance, thermal conduction and convection analysis outlined in my paper. Once the input parameters of your specific receiver design is put into the spreadsheet, it is then possible to predict the thermal and electrical power performances at any given operation temperature and also the flow rates required to reach said operation temperatures. The next steps of this particular project will entail conducting further tests on the receiver design in order to validate the numerical model. Some more things that can be done are further adjustments and refinements to the model, particularly in the areas of the PV cell analysis and the optical analysis. And once the model has been refined and validated, we can then go on to using the model to optimize receiver designs. We can also use the model to attach a heat relativization mechanism and assess its performance. I hope this podcast has been helpful to you, and finally I'll leave you with some useful links and tips. Thank you.